Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a reminder pop-up. We're going to use a timer event to display a reminder on a pop-up form. Today's question comes from Melody in Berlin, Germany, one of my gold members. Melody says, I would like my database to notify me once an hour if there are any new sales leads in the system that I need to respond to. Is there a way to have access pop up a message for me? Yes, of course, Melody. I personally use this all the time. If you've got any kind of event that you want your system to respond to and pop a notice up, if you've got an appointment coming up, or if you've got sales leads you need to respond to, or just even something like remind you to get up and walk around, okay, you can have access run any kind of timer event you want. I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. One simple prerequisite is my intro to VBA. Watch it. It's free. I'll put a link down below in the link section under the video. You can do this without any programming, but with just one line of programming, and I'll show you how in this video, you can make it so much easier than having to deal with macros. I don't really like macros. Go watch intro to VBA if you've never done any programming. Again, it's a free video. I'm going to start off with a copy of my Tech Help free template. You can download a free copy of this off my website. I'll put a link down below in the template section. But you don't have to use my template. You can start with your own database if you want to. Now, in all of my databases, I like to have a main menu. That's a form that starts up when the database starts. And if you don't know how to do that, I cover that in the video where I build the Tech Help free template. So go watch that video. This main menu form is the perfect place to put a timer event. Because it's always open and it's always sitting in the background and you don't want your user closing this. Once they close this, then I put in my database as an event to shut the whole database down if they close the main menu. But that's a topic for a different lesson. How do you find that timer event? Right click, go to design view, bring up the forms properties. You can double click right here if you don't have the property sheet open. On events, we're going to scroll down until we find on timer and timer interval. Now, on timer is an event that runs when the timer interval hits whatever you set it to. Now, notice down here it says specify the timer interval in milliseconds. So if you want one second, you have to put 1,000 in there. If you want five seconds, you put 5,000 in there. So if you want this to run once a minute, it's going to be 1,000 milliseconds times 60. That's once a minute, 60,000. Now, if you want it, once an hour, multiply that by another 60. So it's going to be 3.6 million is what you're gonna put in there to run this event once an hour. And you can put pretty big numbers in here. So you can go three, 600, zero, zero, zero. There's 3.6 million. All right, so that will make the timer event run once an hour. Now for the purposes of class, I'm gonna have this event run once every five seconds. So 5,000 for me just so you can see the event run, and we don't have to sit around here waiting for an hour, right? I mean, I'll, I'm happy to sit here and chat with you for an hour and wait for that thing to pop up, but <laughs> no one wants to sit here for an hour and watch me talk. So let's set it to five seconds. Now, what's going to happen when that hits five seconds? Well, that's what the on timer event is for. Now, you can throw a macro in here if you want to, if you want to open a form. Okay, I hate macros. I like using VBA. So again, if you haven't watched my intro to VBA, it's real simple. It's not hard to do. Go watch that lesson now. For those of you that are with me and know a little VBA, click on this dot, dot, dot button right over here. You might get a window up that says, what kind of builder do you want? Pick the code builder. I explained that in the intro to VBA lesson. But that's going to put us in the form timer event. This is what's going to happen every time that timer runs. Every time it clicks down to zero, Right? For me, five seconds, it's going to come right down to zero. Something's going to happen. So in here, let's just pop up a message for now. Message box, timer, like that. Okay, so I'm just going to see the word timer appear on the screen. All right, let's save it. Let's go back over here, close our form, and then open it up again. Now we'll sit around here and wait. You can listen to me talk for five seconds, right? Here we go, blah, 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 blah. Oh, there it is, after five seconds, timer. All right, that's a simple timer event. Now, the problem with just using a message box is that's going to sit there and you can't do anything else. If you're in the middle of working, you got to stop and hit OK on that. Okay? 
And yeah, it gave you the warning. Oh, there it is again after five more seconds. See, it's going to keep running every five seconds. The code is stopped right now because that message box is sitting there. Okay? But in order to stop that timer, see, there it is again. In order to stop that timer event, you got to close that form. Okay? Now, instead of popping up a message box, how about we pop up a little form? All right, it might sit off to the corner, and that way we can leave it there and still keep working. Okay? So let's just make a simple little form. It's got a notice in it. Okay, let's take the single blank I got here. Copy, paste. Let's call this my notice. Notice F. I'll pop a little notice up. Nothing fancy. Right? Design view. All right, we don't need any fields in it. Let's make the background uh, something like yellow so you notice it. Right? Come in here. Let's pick yellow, but not quite that bright yellow. Let's go more colors. Let's go a little bit like washed out yellow. There we go. And just throw a couple labels on it, right? I'll put a label up here that says notice. And we can make that guy red and maybe bold it and make it a little bit bigger like that. Okay, like so. And maybe center it like there. Okay, let's drop another one on there. And what are we going to have this guy do? We're going to have this say uh, there are customers to follow up with. Okay, let's say you've got a multi-user database, for example, and other people are entering in sales leads, or hey, you've got to follow this guy, or service reports, or anything, whatever you want this to do, or maybe even your own stuff. Like you open up the database in the morning, you want it to know, hey, there's, there's customers you got to deal with, okay? All right, a little format on this guy, maybe make it uh, dark blue or black, I don't know. Okay, resize that. All right, let's save that, close it, take a peek at it. All right, we don't need any data in it, so we can get rid of the navigation buttons and the record selectors, design view. And again, I've got lots of videos on form design and making your forms look pretty. I start with my free access beginner level one class. It's three hours long. We cover a little bit of form stuff in there. Level two, we go over even more. Okay, we can go to the format tab here, turn off the record selectors, turn off the navigation buttons, turn off the scroll bars. Whoops, neither. There we go. All right, now let's save it and take a peek. Okay, nice little, nice little form there. All right, just to, just to put a notice in your face. Now let's go back to my code window. I always leave it open. I don't usually close this while I'm working on designing my database, and it should be down in your taskbar down below, so you can just flip between it. But if you closed it, you can go back into your main menu, design, all right, and then go back to that event tab, find on timer, click right here, or there's a little button right there you can use to go to this form's code. See that? Always five different ways to do everything in Access. All right, now we don't want a message box a timer anymore. I want to open up that form. So it's, again, one line of code, do command, dot open form, and then notice F, just like that. Okay, save it. All right, and then open up your menu. Wait five seconds. <laughs> and there's my notice. Okay, now the nice thing is I can be working with something else like that. Oh, see there, and it just popped up. All right, and I could be over here typing in some data or doing this and that, and it just popped up. Now I can just leave it sit there, all right, or move it over here, save it over there, okay, and it'll just keep popping up, okay. I can do some stuff over here, do some stuff over there, and my notice is sitting there. And if by some chance something does cover it every five seconds, it'll come back to the foreground. See? See look at that, see? And it will steal your focus, though. In the Members Extended Cut, I'll show you how to make it not steal your focus. So even though it's popping up, it'll still stay here so you can keep typing. Okay, but we can close that. Now, you can actually make that guy a pop-up form if you want to so it stays on top of other windows. I don't particularly like pop-up forms. There's a, a format setting called pop-up. The reason why is most of us use, well, a lot of us use a lot uh, multi-monitor setups now. And if you've got more than one monitor, that pop-up window could appear on any of them depending on where you had your access database last and where you saved that form. So it might not show up on your main monitor where you've got your database. I don't like pop-up forms. But usually this little guy showing itself is enough. So you can be like, oh, okay, my notice is there, and then you can go back to work, and then if you don't do anything in another couple minutes, it'll pop up again. Now, what criteria can we use to decide whether or not to show this? Well, that's, that's really up to you. You can use anything from inside your database to determine whether or not you've got to show that guy. Now, I've got lots of other videos on how to do things like DLOOKUPs or reading values from forms or whatever, whatever criteria you want to use to say, hey, show me a pop-up form. 
you can do that. Or even what that form does when it opens up. I'm just showing you a simple message. You could have that form do all kinds of stuff. You could send out an email. You can sound an alarm. You can back up your database. You can do whatever, pretty much whatever you could think of. You can have that form run. And that's just a matter of adding the programming to it. But let's pick some condition in the database to where that window won't show up unless that condition's met. For example, I've got an is active field here in my database. All right, let me fix my name. I just destroyed my name typing in stuff, didn't I? Okay, let's say I only want to show that pop-up message if a customer is marked active. Now, normally I use that is active to whether or not the customer is an actual active customer. Like, you know, if they retire and they're no longer buying from you, you can mark them inactive. But for the purposes of this lesson, let's say active means I've got to do something for them. Maybe it's like a follow-up thing. All right, so I'm going to turn everybody off as far as active goes. Okay? Now, back to my code. How can I determine whether or not to show that? Well, I'm going to use the dlookup function to see whether or not there are any active customers in my database. And again, if you've never used the dlookup function, I've got free videos on that. Go watch the dlookup video first, understand that, then come back here. All right, so we need a little bit more programming in here now. So I'm going to look up a customer ID, so I'll need to store that in some variable. So I'll dim ID as a long. Okay. And I'm going to say ID equals nz, nz is null zero. What that does is it wraps the dlookup function in another function so that in case dlookup returns a null, in other words, there are no customers that meet this criteria, it'll return a zero instead of a null, which is easier to deal with. All right, so that's all nz does. And again, I've got videos on using dlookup with nz together. Go watch the nz function video. It's free. It's down in the link section. Go down there. There's lots of good stuff in that link section. All right, so nz dlookup. What am I looking up? I'm looking up a customer ID from the customer table where is active, that's that field, equals true. And I want to wrap that inside of an NZ and return a zero if the customer doesn't exist. So go out to the customer table, find me any customer ID, anyone, doesn't matter. I just want to know if someone meets this criteria where is active is true. You can use anything you want in there. You can look up in your follow-up table if a follow-up date is now or later. Uh, uh, whatever you want to do. You can use the, uh, the, the dmax function to find the largest value of something. There's all kinds of stuff you can do here. I'm just scratching the surface. Now I'm going to say here, if ID is not zero, then we have a customer. Go ahead and open up that form. And if. And that will run once every five seconds. And someone just beamed in. Did you hear that? <laughs> I got tons of alarms that go off in my office. And if there are no customers that meet this criteria, it just won't do anything. Okay? All right, let's save that. Let's come back over here. I'm going to close my form. I like to close forms and reopen them every time I make a change. All right, open it up, and now we'll sit here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nothing's happening, right? My five-second timer isn't going off. That's because there are no customers that are active in my database. Let's go make one active. All right, let's say someone else on a different computer now. All right, if you've got your database set up multi-user, for example, someone else is working with customers, and they mark me active, and then I close that. All right, and now let's see. Within five, oh, there it is. As I say, within five seconds, you should see that notice. There are customers to follow up with. Okay, and you can do all kinds of stuff. You can put a button on here to open up that customer record. Okay, or open up all the uh, the active customers. I'll put that in the extended video. Okay, I'll put that in the extended video um, where you just click the button. It'll open up whatever customers are active. I'm also going to add a countdown timer. All right, see this little thing right here? That's a, a little timer on your main menu form that'll actually show you it's counting down. Five, four, three, two, right? And give you the option to pause it if you want to. Click on that little box if you want to stop that timer. If you don't want to be bothered for a while. Okay. That'll be in the extended cut for members. And if you want to learn more about timer events, I actually cover them in a couple of my different classes. In my Access Expert 24 class, I show you how to make a timer event that goes out to the web and checks a weather service. Every whatever interval you specify, one minute, one hour, whatever. It'll get the current temperature and humidity 
and the status, whether it's clear or not, and save that in a table for you. So you get the weather information once an hour. In Access Developer 6, I create an enhanced timer form that you can use to perform pretty much any function you want, like sending out an employee email once every five seconds or whatever. I also show you how to set up a nightly backup event that runs at, for example, 3 a.m. that will back up the critical tables from your database. In Access Developer 11, I make a quiz form where it pops a question up and you have so many seconds to answer, and if you don't answer in that time, it closes the form and moves on to the next question. That's a pretty cool lesson. But for right now, if you want to continue learning with the pop-up form, check out the extended cut for members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website, and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select All to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.